on my JDM page. Okay, still nothing here. I have a second one now and it's still not connecting, I don't know why. Testing one, two, three. Hi guys, if you're just joining me now, let me know and say hello. Uh, Bitrate Facebook, let's have a look at Facebook. Okay, that's really weird. Okay, you have to delete that one because I think does it show that it's been cancelled or? It shows that it was last. Yeah, just delete that. And hopefully this one shows more. Okay. That's weird, right? Okay, let's have a look. Is there another live now? Okay. So I'm just going to unpin this. Uh, don't delete the wrong one though. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, if you're just joining me now, just give me a second or two. Sorry about this. Uh, videos okay so it's not showing up yet let me go back into the event Live video, streaming key. Okay, now it show it shows up. Okay, I'm gonna hit go live now. Okay, hopefully this works, guys. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. Make sure you say hello and let me know where you're watching from. Apparently, I am live uh, again. Um, if this is your first time watching one of my broadcasts, my name is Jackie M, and I am a former restaurant owner based here in Sydney, Australia, born and raised in Malaysia, and I do Malaysian food. I specialize in Malaysian food. And you know what? A few weeks ago, I was invited to check out uh, Thermomix TM6, a new model, and I have been using a TM5 for the best part of the last seven years without any issues, did not think I needed an upgrade or anything like that. I had heard from other people, oh, look, you know, it's basically the same thing. It looks the same. But when I went to check it out, I realized it had a lot of uh, features that I wasn't expecting. So um, that really intrigued me. So uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing a series of live videos this week uh, leading up to Christmas. This is the second of three. If you missed the previous one, you can check it out at my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Jackie M. Just click on the videos tab and you'll be able to find it. Or you can just watch it on YouTube, youtube.com slash Jackie M. Hey Dixie, how you doing? Good to see you again. All right, so uh, thanks everyone for joining me. Uh, while I don't want to talk too much. Um, it's live in your event, but I don't see it on your page. Is that right? It's live in my event, but Paul doesn't see it on my page. Uh, I wonder if you can actually, that is so weird, right? Sorry guys, just give us another couple of seconds. Let's see if we can. Yeah, will it let you? It should do, I would imagine. I'll just go to your profile. Yeah, okay, okay, sure. Just post it on my page. Uh, all right, thanks guys for joining me. And today we are carrying on with the second of our series on using the Thermomix TM6 for Malaysian cooking. So the series called Unlocking Malaysian Flavors in your Thermomix TM6. And this is my TM6. And unfortunately, I'm still trying to kind of see how I can remove the glare so that you guys can see what it looks like, especially for those of you in places where you may not have been familiar with the Thermomix. Okay, so today I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use both my TM5 and my TM6. The reason being that we're going to be doing two things concurrently, okay? So what are we making today? We are making uh, something called harmin in my neck of the woods. Literally means uh, 
prawn noodles, okay? Uh, and it's in a soup. And this is what I've been doing for many years since I got a hold of a TM5. So this is something that can work on both. Now, uh, one thing that I am using the TM6 for that is different to the TM5 is that the TM6 has a higher heat threshold, okay? So I'm going to use the TM6 to make a sambal for it. You know, uh, for those of you who are from Malaysia or you've eaten Malaysian food, there's something called sambal, um, sambal, uh, ni? <laughs> uh, sambal blachan tumis, okay? This is a fried sambal, so it's not a fresh sambal, but it's a fried sambal, and I'm going to cook it in a TM6 because it can take a higher temperature, okay? So what do we need to make the prawn noodle soup? Uh, now, I have to admit, I come from a part of Malaysia, uh, Suramban, where, uh, you, you know, my prawn noodle soup may be a little bit different to the prawn noodle soup you would be familiar with if you were in, say, in Penang or something like that, okay? And Ipo has something called Kaisi Ho Fun, which I really, really love, which is a shredded chicken noodles with prawns as well, uses prawn stock, and also has garlic chives. Uh, and the version that I grew up eating, courtesy of my stepmom, is something like uh, she kind of split the difference between the two of them. The Penang one, which is quite intense, strong flavored, and the uh, Ipo Kaisi Ho Fun, which has shredded chicken. Okay, I don't have any shredded chicken today, but uh, just so you know that that's the version that I usually eat. Okay, so everybody's version is different. And the way I used to make hamin for my restaurant was that I would use prawn shells, lots of prawn shells, okay, so I've got some over here, this is not even barely <laughs> uh, uh, what I have in my freezer usually, okay, so I eat a fair bit of prawns and I save all the shells, not just the head by the way, as a heads up, okay, so I, I save all the prawns and what I would do every now, uh, uh, now and then, but obviously back in my restaurant day, so what I would do is I would fry this in oil and garlic, okay, Lots of oil, lots of garlic, and I would fry it in a big pot, and then I would add um, unseasoned chicken stock or water, and simmer it, and then season it, add other stuff to it. And then what you end up with is a big uh, multi-gallon pot of prawn soup, prawn flavored soup, that you then strain into bowls of prawn noodles that you serve, okay? But absent a restaurant, I don't need that much soup, but I've got, you know, and then it would just sit on my stove forever until I ran out, okay? So this is a better way, in my opinion, to do this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make the prawn noodles out of prawn paste that we're going to make in a Thermomix, okay? So first of all, uh, like I said, we're going to use two Thermomixes, one behind me, which is a TM5. Like I said, it looks virtually identical, uh, but it does, uh, the TM6 has got a lot more functionality, okay? So what we're going to do with the TM6 is we're going to make the sambal here using uh, guided cooking, okay? So you can get to see how uh, this new feature works and also how I use the high heat setting, okay? So uh, we've got the onion and we've got some chilies. And this is essentially what I'm going to be using for the sambal, which I'm going to get started on right away because that takes 20 minutes to cook, okay? Because it's guided cooking, it does its own thing. But just give me a second while I grab some of the other stuff over here. Okay? And by the way, if you want the recipes to all of these, um, two ways. You can uh, sign up to my email list if you haven't already. You can do that at Jack, uh, sorry, malaysianchefs.com slash recipes. Or you can do that via, um, um, via our WhatsApp group. We've just, I've just created a bespoke WhatsApp group where um, I'm going to start posting my videos on Thermomix specific content and also recipes and tips and any new updates about the Thermomix TM6, okay? Because I'm told that new things are, like new features are constantly being rolled out. So it may be true that my associate who, when this came out several years ago, it may be true that there wasn't a lot of difference between this and that at the time, okay? But over the last 
couple of years, they've rolled out a lot of new functionality and obviously a lot of recipes as well that are in this guided cooking section. Okay, so let's get started. All going okay? Cool, okay. Uh, uh, Paul is over here, Paul from South Africa, who, say hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to make the sambal first, but we're going to cheat a little bit. Okay, now, uh, I, I want to get started and then I can explain a little bit. So we're going to use the guided cooking, okay, to make the sambal. So on this panel here, there's an option if I click on my recipes, okay, and go to uh, created collections okay these are all stuff that I've done online this is Wi-Fi enabled okay and it's like it automatically updates live sort of thing so I have saved some recipes in here that I think will be useful for my cooking and uh, for other people who want to cook my food as well okay and I can actually share these out to people in my community okay if ever you get a hold of a Thermomix <laughs> a TM6 uh, okay so there are some recipes I've saved here. They're not all mine, okay? But uh, they are from people in the Thermomix community, okay? Including uh, crispy shallots and shallot oil, including uh, crispy garlic slices and garlic oil. And what we're going to use is the caramelized onion guided cooking, okay? So I'm not using a uh, sambal blachan recipe here, okay? Uh, and we're going to explain why. But I'm going to because well, uh, uh, we'll go into that a little bit. So if I select the caramelized onion, it will say you want uh, uh, four to five hundred grams. I just press continue, and then it says serve or use it as needed. Okay, sorry. I'm just gonna start this. Here we go. Uh, my recipes, create collections, and basics. Okay, caramelized onion start cooking this is my hack for producing sambal blachan this way okay so it tells me on the first screen place 20 grams of oil in here okay so i'm just going to add 20 grams of oil uh of course i don't have any here paul would you mind just getting me some oil please and when you come back if you don't mind just filling up the uh, water over here um how much oil i'll just bring my thing uh, i just need a little bit just bring like one of those tubs of oil with a uh, with a ladle. Okay, so I'm going to add 20 grams of oil now. Uh, while Paul is looking for the oil, what I want to point out is with a guided cooking for the high heat function. Okay, and remember, if you caught my first broadcast the other day, the high heat is that it goes up to 160 degrees but at this point so i'm just going to measure 20 grams of oil at this point you can only activate the high heat function using the recipes that are pre-built in here okay which is why i'm not using a sambal blachan recipe in here because it hasn't been created and officially added to it yet but i'm using a caramelized onion function in here so this is to make some caramelized onion so I'm just going to click next and it says add four to five hundred grams of brown onion cut into wedges, which is here, okay? And we're going to add that in. So not quite enough, but you know what? I'm going to throw in some chilies. It doesn't say add some chilies, but I'm going to throw some in, okay? And I could probably use a little bit more chilies. Uh, Paul, would you mind just getting some chilies? <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's why he came out here really to help me out with my stuff. Okay, um, so in the meantime, I've got some peeled garlic. And by the way, there's a there's a way you can actually peel garlic. Do you want a board and knife? Could you just uh, get me a board and knife here? I've got a, I think I've got a board here. No, bring me a board if you don't mind. <laughs> I'm gonna add a couple. The yeah, I'm gonna add a couple more chilies in here. Okay, these are nice red chilies here. Uh, you can even use the Thermomix to peel for you. Okay, with the TM6. I'm not sure about the TM5. I never knew about that feature. But with the TM6, if you buy an attachment, you can actually get it to peel for you. Okay, so I've got the chilies. Um, it's near enough. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to this. Okay. Okay, 
So I'm just going to click next. And it says place the splash guard. And this is a new thing as well with the TM6. Okay, this did not um, exist in my TM5 days. But here's the splash guard. Uh, here's the lid. Okay, and usually it comes with this thing that goes on top. But it says use the splash guard because it is high heat. Okay, done. And then it says please turn speed selector to start. So you just turn that and it will go. Okay, so it saves. 20 minutes and down the bottom it says it's sauteing okay so while that's doing its thing you can go away and do something else which in this case is this one over here okay so we are going to make the paste okay so I've got the prawn shells defrosted from my freezer okay I'm gonna add this into my thermomix bowl And then I'm going to add garlic. I usually use a lot of garlic, okay? In goes the garlic. And I'm going to add the oil. Grab it oil. Okay, and I'm going to cover this. And I'm going to cook this. So I'm doing that. And it's stirring and cooking for me right now. Okay. So this one here, it says it's reached a max temperature. So you if you can visualize this thing, like I said, the problem is that like the reflection doesn't really help. But it says that I've got 18 minutes and 20 seconds to go and it's reached the top temperature it needs and it's cooking okay so you can hear it a little bit sauteing whereas in the background i'm doing the um the the, the prawn shells okay so um in the meantime i've got some peeled prawns here and i've got some noodles okay and i've got some eggs okay so I'm using these noodles and obviously if you've been to Malaysia and you had harmin, you know this is not the standard noodle that goes with it. If you have Kaisi Ho Fun, they would usually serve it with thin fresh rice noodles. If you have harmin, usually they actually serve it with vermicelli rice sticks and or um, uh, Hokkien noodles, okay? This is more like white cut one ton noodles, but that's what I've got sitting in my fridge at home today. So that's what we're using. and couple of eggs here and by the way guys just say hello let me know where you're watching from and let me know if you own a Thermomix which version you own and if you've got any questions hit me up okay so I've got a couple of boiled eggs and I've got some what we call gangkong in Malaysia water convolvers okay that I've basically blanched in a separate pot but obviously you can actually do all of that in the thermomix as well it's just because i'm doing this already and i didn't want to like i, I want to actually showcase these two specific functions today as opposed to showing you how to steam and how to uh boil an egg and all that sort of stuff but it is capable of doing all that as well okay so that's going hey how are you how's me how i exit this idea here Grandi Canada, all oh, right. Why are you in Canada? Sydney is better. <laughs> Sorry to all the Canadians out there. <laughs> How's Canada treating you, by the way? To be fair, to be fair, Sydney has had better summers. We've just had the coldest summer so ever that I actually still have my heater on. Uh, missing Sydney. Ah, oh, see, where, where in Canada are you? Okay. I've never been to Canada, so I'm sorry guys for well, those of you who are in Canada. But uh, Canada always, I, oh, minus 40. I always imagine Canada as being too cold for me. You know, when I, when I go back to Malaysia, even the Malaysians complain about how hot it is. But I love it. To me, Malaysian weather, 
Malaysian temperatures are perfect for me, okay? The great thing about Malaysia, if ever you plan to visit, you don't have to worry about packing winter clothes and how cold. It's basically summer 365 days a year, okay? So you don't, uh, you know, you, you, you don't think, oh, you're going to get cold and need a jacket or anything like that. So that's what I love about Malaysia, among other things, the food and all that. <laughs> oh, Dixie is in Canada too. <laughs> I'm going to, Calgary, oh my god, <laughs> that sounds really, really cold. Okay, so I've got two eggs here that I'll peel. And I'm just gonna, that, well, that I've boiled, I'm just gonna peel, okay? So usually with hami, I would serve it, back in my restaurant, I would serve it with shredded chicken and prawns and also uh, kanko or water convolvers or ong choy if you're Chinese and also garlic chives. I don't have any garlic chives in my fridge today, so we're gonna skip that. But I also serve it with some sambal belacan, okay? Which we're going to hack by using the caramelized onion function in this guided cooking format with a the thermal mix, okay? And you can actually tweak these guided cook, I mean, like these uh, recipes built into your thermal mix, okay? So instead of something else, you want to put something in there, you can actually edit it and, and change it, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind. But at this point, the guided cooking, like for the high heat, you can only use the high heat function if you use one of their pre-built recipes, okay? Uh, which is why I'm having to use the caramelized onion recipe to make my sambal blacha, right? And again, the reason is just for checks and measures, just to make sure, because people can, uh, you know, they don't want people to accidentally hurt themselves by using high heat and, and, and adding random stuff into it, okay? But, so at this point, I don't know if it might change later on, at this point, if I want to make something that's not in here, I would use a pre-existing recipe and tweak it for myself, right? Say for instance, if I want to make, or oh, I don't know. If I want to make laksa paste as well, I would use the caramelized onion function, okay? Because all these have the same concept, which is to fry the paste until it's ground, right? So I'm going to show you what it looks like after this. And the other great thing about this is that it does have fried, crispy fried shallots as one of the pre-built-in recipes in the guided cooking section. So when I want crispy fried shallots, I just use that. It'll tell you, like what I showed you before, it'll say, okay, uh, weigh in like how many grams of thinly sliced crispy onion, uh, thinly sliced onion, okay, and then add like how much oil, and then it will say put on the lid, put on the, the splatter guard, and then it will tell you turn the dial, and then off you go, you walk away, 15 minutes later, you've got crispy fried onion all done up for you, okay, so these are the sort of stuff that the Thermomix is capable of doing to make your life easier in the kitchen, right, um, okay, so I've peeled both eggs, and we are going to just halve them. And this is going to be our lunch, by the way. Uh, you're just tuning in, in uh, from other parts of the world. I know it's late for some of you guys, but here in Sydney, it is just 11.22 coming up to lunchtime. So this will be perfect timing. Okay. So just some eggs. And let's have a look. Okay, so this is cooked. Okay, you can cook it a little bit more if you like. But I just want to show you, you can see a little bit of the oil and a bit of the juices. I'm going to add some seasoning, okay? Now, this is my recipe to make prawn paste, uh, prawn noodle soup paste. Okay, I'm going to add some sugar in here. It's really arbitrary how much you put in. Now, sometimes I actually put very little or none at all, okay? It's just kind of depending on your personal taste. And I'll put in some chicken powder, okay? This is, let me just, I, I want to actually pull. I mean, you get a minute, <laughs> sorry. Okay, this chicken powder, chicken stock granules, right? Or if you don't want to use something like that, can you move this arm? 
back over here so that I can use the overhead. Put that in there and put a bit of pepper if you want. You can cook it a little bit longer or you can use it to blend. Okay, so now you've seen you've got the, um, the prawn shells, the oil, and you've got the seasoning in there. Let's cook it for another two minutes. Okay, so that's cooking at the top temperature of a TM5, which is 120 degrees, okay? Uh, this is cooking at 160 degrees. You see all those sort of steam coming out? Um, for those of you who own a TM5 or prior, this is a very new thing, okay? Uh, and this is great for Malaysian cooking, in my opinion. And then uh, I'm going to show you This is the new bowl that comes with the TM6. The TM5 did not have this lid before, okay? But this is where you would you can cook your rice. That's one option. And usually when I am serving this, I would throw in the two eggs in here, uh, put in the, the, the water or soup to make the prawn noodle soup, put in the prawn paste that we're making now, and then on top here, okay, it's got a two-layer steamer, I can put the noodles in here and put the gangkong and maybe bean sprouts and whatever on top and put just basically it's going to sit in here like this and that's my lunch all done right so that is great especially for people who are busy or who want to whip up some lunch in their dorm room in their college or if you want to whip up some lunch in your office or something like that you know and you're just cooking for like you know just like maybe up to four people or something okay so that's still going i'm just gonna stop this okay you see that here so the the prawn shells are beautifully red and now we're going to we're going to process this on high uh on high speed okay now you just got to be a little bit careful the previous model of the thermomix the tm5 the lid is different to the new one okay so this lid just sits over here and if you want to do any kind of like blending on high speed, especially if you've got like a full jar, just kind of like gently rest your hand on it, okay? Just in case it just kind of like the, you know, it, it kind of like blows it out sort of thing. And that's sometimes where people kind of go wrong with their thermomix, okay? It's just the same as using a blender. If you're blending something on high speed, you've got to make sure the lid is on, right? Um, so this cup just goes on here. But the new model has this. And basically, they've designed it so that it's foolproof, okay? When you stick it on, it doesn't come off, okay? Uh, okay, so let's just blitz this. This is going to be a little bit loud. I'm just going to blitz it for about 10 seconds on high speed, okay? There you go this is paste okay and if you like you can add more oil to it you know how some people like their prawn noodle soup to have a nice oily sheen on top but this is what you produce and this is like with almost no effort on your part right you're just saving all the prawn shells you're chucking it in and then adding oil and adding garlic and then you're blending it to this can you get me like uh, those jars, uh, sambal jars or something like that or something like that? I'm going to pour this out for you so you can see how it looks. And then you can store this in the freezer or in the fridge. And this is still cooking, okay? It's caramelizing the onions. But obviously caramelized onion bits are some resemblance to us like frying. But if you're used to Malaysian cooking, every kind of like curry paste or, or sambal paste or something like that that you make in, um, you know, in a Malaysian recipe, you'll be standing over a stove uh, with oil and frying it. They always say, right, all the recipes say, like add oil, heat up the oil, add the sambal, and the sambal will be something sloppy like this, and you add it in and it splatters everywhere. Um, so it's a little bit tedious, if you know what I mean. So I think to some extent, the Thermomix actually helped me to do 
uh, be more efficient in the kitchen and also to kind of like cut down on all the less pleasant aspects of cooking, right? Uh, I love cooking obviously because I gave up my IT consultancy to go into food full time, right? But there are certain parts of cooking that do like are a little bit tedious, okay? Now, especially when you get oil splattered all over your kitchen uh, splash bag and your stove and whatever, and also just cleaning up afterwards as well, okay? So this is what it looks like, and can you get me a spatula as well? That's probably a good idea. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna show you, and this is something that you can do, right? You can even like stick this into jars and give it away as gifts or like for like, you know, if you've got college age kids. Um, Get them a Thermomix and they can make it themselves. Yeah, get them a Thermomix so they can make it themselves. <laughs> or you can make all these for them, right? Stick them in the jar, right? And I'm, I'm not doing this properly, obviously. But there you go, that's your jar. Okay, and how do you use this, right? The way I use it is, uh, let me just put the rest of this in a in something else. Do you have like a bigger bowl I can stick this in? Okay. The way I use this, I'll show you, is I, I stick them into the fridge, right, or freezer. And obviously it doesn't have to be in jars, you can put them into like plastic tubs as well. Uh, it's, big enough. it's not big enough, but uh, that's too tall for the fridge. Okay, so all these, and you'll find in my fridge I have a lot of this and sometimes I actually use more oil I didn't use that much oil today but you know it might be worth putting more oil in it okay so so this is what I end up with okay this is just from like a couple of tubs of corn shells okay so lots and lots of this and what you can do now okay you keep this in the fridge or freezer you feel like prawn noodle soup you don't have to cook up a big pot of uh, prawn heads and prawn soup and whatever and then strain it because even if you strain a big pot of prawn noodle soup stock right you got the volume is like huge okay you might get a five liter uh, bag of prawn stock or whatever and you need space to be able to keep it okay whereas this is all kind of compressed for you. So when I feel like prawn noodle soup, which is practically every day, Paul will tell you, yes. uh, <laughs> I put some prawn, prawn paste in here, okay? Depending on how much seasoning you use, it's very aga aga. You guys know me and my aga aga style of cooking, right? So a lot of guesstimating. If you put more salt or seasoning in it, you use less. If you put uh, less, you use more, okay? So this is what I used to do, okay? For a prawn put some water in here or maybe I'll use a little bit of a bit more paste on average I would make it so that I would use about one to two tablespoons of paste maybe a bit more depending on how intense you want the flavor so I put that in here and if I wanted to boil the eggs which I've already done I would put the, the simmer basket in here with the eggs in here okay but we're not doing that today um, then just sit cover this and bring it to a boil, okay? If you want to cheat, you can just use boiling water, okay? Because this is very intense in flavor, you can pretty much just boil a kettle of water and pour it over some paste, almost like instant noodles, except you're using healthy prawn shells, like real prawn shells as opposed to all these artificial seasoning that go into, go into that, right? Okay, so we're just bringing this back to a boil and, you know, like I said, usually what I would do uh, this is not the right type of noodles for steaming, but if there were steaming noodles like fresh rice noodles or stuff like that, I would put the steaming noodles on the layer on top, right? So the Varoma, this one here. So I'll put the noodles in here. Uh, the eggs in the basket underneath because I want the eggs a little bit like touching the water so it cooks quickly. Uh, noodles in here. And then I can put the vegetables on this side or on the next layer if you don't want the vegetables to stain the noodles, okay? You know how you like Chinese greens when they uh, put together with like say ho fun, like rice noodles, it might kind of like discolor the noodles themselves as well. Okay, so we've got this going and 
the eggs and then the prawns. I actually forgot to cook the prawns, so what I am going to do is stick the basket, the simmer basket, into my... I don't know actually if this is the different design to the old one, but you can actually put the prawns in here, or you... Yeah, what I would do is actually put the prawns in here and steam it together as well, okay? So let's do that. So the prawns you can either purge separately or you can steam them over here. And let's just... Where did I put the prawns? Here we go. <laughs> okay, so well, let's put the prawns on the steamer basket. And if you've got, you know, other protein or whatever, you can use that. Okay, so let me just click next on that. And just steam it together with the noodles, uh, with the soup, okay? So, now, remember we're making caramelized onion here. The next step of the recipe actually says add 20 grams balsamic vinegar, okay? We're not putting balsamic vinegar into our sambal blachan. Right now, this is what it, I don't, I don't know if I take it out, it's going to mess it up. But, okay, this is what it looks right now, okay? I've got the chilies, I've got the onion, okay, and the oil. I'm going to add a bit of sugar, okay? Uh, optional, but this is how I make my sambal. I'll put a little bit of fish sauce here. You can use soy sauce if you like. And I'll put some shrimp paste. Uh, obviously, you would use Malaysian shrimp paste if you can get a hold of it. Uh, but for whatever reason, I can't buy it. Um, the shrimp paste powder at the moment. Actually, you know what? I do still have some leftover from it. Can you dig out and also get me a spoon for it as well? Uh, and you know what? Uh, you're going to find out if you're just watching me now. I am a little bit obsessed with using chicken powder and everything. So a little bit of chicken powder that kind of gives it body, all right? And I know, like, I've had someone watch me make some oblatan in a separate video, and they complain, "Who on earth puts chicken powder in their some oblatan?" But try it. You be surprised. It does work. Okay, so Malaysian product, sort of blachan, okay, blachan powder, but if you can't get a hold of it, you can use other similar shrimp paste, okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of that in here. Okay, now you just got to be a little bit careful that you don't kind of like, uh, it's okay, because it's powder, it's okay. You don't want to um, confuse this, okay, okay, it says a teaspoon of salt, and next... Stir to combine with the spatula. Okay, so to, to this thing, the cooking is actually done, okay? So there's a stir to combine with the spatula, which I don't really need to do because what I'm going to do, and then next it says place simmering basket instead of whatever in there. Next, okay, it says to put this basket on top, okay? Again, here's a precaution, okay? So it's very clever. It tells you to do things that you yourself might not have thought to do. And that's just to make sure you don't kind of make a mess of like your your your, your workspace, okay? And it says turn speed selector to stir, okay? So for the next three minutes, it's just going to stir around and cook this for a little bit longer just to blend in the flavors. And then we're going to do an extra step after that, okay, so it's kind of like our hack on this. Now, in the meantime, this has reached the top temperature and it's on steaming mode. And we're just steaming the prawns. Like I said, if you've got other proteins you want to add to it, in particular seafood like squid or fish balls, uh, which is kind of like my favorite, one of my favorite things to add to my lunches and stuff are like cuttlefish balls and that sort of stuff, all right? So this is going to cook for another, uh, it's got about two minutes left here. So this is my current hack for this, okay? Uh, this is a very, very new machine for me. I literally only opened the box. I mean, I ordered it and it was delivered the next day but I literally only opened the box several weeks later 
because I was just so busy with my other projects. Um, speaking of other projects, I'll tell you guys about it in a second. Um, so this is very new and I'm still discovering its functionalities and how I use it to do stuff that I want it to do, okay? So, uh, which is why it's a good opportunity for you to either sign up to my email list or especially join the WhatsApp group that I'm going to get Paul to post in the comments. Um, so that this is a completely new group, no content in it at the moment, but I'm going to be using it to tell you guys more about um, you know, my tips and tricks and recipes and also when I go live again or create any new content around the Thermomix TM6, okay? So uh, we're going to uh, get you guys to join that WhatsApp group, especially if you're interested to keep on top of things. Like I said, I'm still discovering all the new functionalities. And anyone here lives in Sydney, right? Uh, if you live in Sydney and you've got a little bit of time next week, on Thursday the 29th at 11 a.m., I'm going to be serving up some of these and other stuff made using a Thermomix TM6. And also, I'm going to be uh, doing a, a cooking experience, okay, using a th Thermomix TM6. So whether you own a Thermomix or you don't, um, come along to my place. There's an invitation that I'll post it online. If you can't find it, just ping me, message me or whatever, and I'll point you in the right direction. And I'd love to see you, but spaces are very limited because my place here is actually quite small, okay? So right now, we've already got... Uh, but a lot of people express interest or are coming. Um, so let me know. So glad I'm... Uh, oh, yay, Bernard. Great. <laughs> Would love to have you. <laughs> okay, so that's still going. Here we go. So Bernard is going to be our first community member in the WhatsApp group. Would love to have you. Okay, so this, like I said, has stirred a little bit longer. So it's done. It's still in big chunks. I'm going to add a little bit more oil to this because sambal, uh, sambal tumis, I like it oily, fried sambal, okay, a bit more oil. And then, because I'm not using the high heat function, it doesn't matter now, that is not going to like tell me, oh look, you know, you're using um, the recipe wrong. Uh, I'm just going to blitz this, okay, I'm going to blitz this at uh, high speed, okay. So that it can just blend all the ingredients, the chili, the onion, the oil, and all the seasoning. Okay. Okay. So let's have a look and see what it looks like. There we go. Okay. So that's the sambal. Let me just taste test here. It's very spicy. I was really surprised. I thought, I thought that um, the big red chilies aren't going to be that spicy. Let's take it out. I think we need another spatula. Okay. So what this has done. is that it's blitz everything is fried it up for me it's blitzed it up for me and then if I let it rest for a little bit the the oil will show up on the surface okay so that's your sambal belacan again you can put it in your fridge and voila that's done and you don't have to worry about that much cleaning up or anything like that okay so this has been cleaned like this. The, the, the good thing, you know, I want to mention this. Uh, I, I had someone comment the other day that they actually bought a, uh, a competitor's product. And I actually have a lot of these competitor's products because they send them out to me over the years because I do food and I do a lot of content. A lot of um, people contact me and say, can I send you this and you use it in your cooking and stuff like that. Okay, so I do have competitor's products. Uh, for Thermomixes and every time someone messages me privately and say I saw your video on how to use uh, you know on this versus uh, the Thermomix what would you personally tell people about I always tell them if you can afford it get the Thermomix okay because they're different among other things among the 50 other things that are different about it is that this is high quality steel okay and like um, when you cook something and you fry something like that 
I have used the competitors' products to make things like kaya, just coconut pandan jam, right? Malaysians love kaya. They see it as very, very labor intensive, and the thermal mix is fantastic for that. Um, the um, the competitors' products. I end up spending about half an hour trying to scrub the burn marks from the jug. Okay, so that's just one example of how the thermal mix is different. Okay, so in the meantime. This is done. Okay, so I've got the prawns that are all steam, steamed up over here. Okay, and obviously whatever else you want to steam will be done in here as well. And let's just move this out of the way. And let's get a bowl. And I'm going to just switch this out quickly. Okay, I'm going to present this. In here. So like I said, you you could have steamed the noodles, especially if they're the steaming variety. You can steam the noodles in the steamer basket while the soup was heating up. And the soup does not need to heat up for that long. I only did it that long because I had I forgot to cook the prawns and I needed to cook the prawns. So this is what you would do. And That's my soup done up and yeah, like I said, the soup does not need to cook that long. Uh, you can practically just pour boiling water into a couple of tablespoons of the soup, stir it and strain it out. Okay, so it does have bits in it, so you do want to strain it out. It's got the prawn shell bits. Okay. And you can use the thermomix strainer too if you want, right? So that's what it looks like. The egg, the prawns, okay, and anything else that you want to add to this. The fried onion, which let me just go and grab some. How are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, join my WhatsApp group, right? Bernard's going to join the WhatsApp group. It's a totally new WhatsApp group. It's all going to be just my content on the Thermomix. Um, so it's, you know, like I said, I've used my TM5 for the longest time. For seven years now, I looked back. And I've never had any problems with it. That's the funny thing. It's never broken down. It's never broken. Like, I've never broken any parts of it or anything like that. The only time was I sent it back for a service one time and they just recalibrated the scale. So it's got built-in scales, which is fantastic, right? Uh, but the TM5 did have certain limitations, even though I use it every day. It did have certain limitations that have been basically met by the TM6, the latest version, okay? So that's my prawn noodle soup. I'll put a dollop of the sambal here. Okay. Yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there you go. And the fried crispy fried shallots you can also make in the thermos in the TM6 because it can reach that higher temperature threshold. Okay. So let me just try and switch the camera over to the overhead. So wow. let's see if you can see it, assuming this is all lined up properly. I hope so. <laughs> Over, do I need to type in the link or you need to add me in using the cell phone? Uh, if you click on that link, uh, that's it a good pops, point. It pops WhatsApp it up pop and you click the button. Yeah, if you click on that link, um, bit.ly slash Jackie and WhatsApp TM. Um, it is case sensitive, so if you do type it in, just that. But best bet, click on it and it should pop up your WhatsApp app or if you're watching from a computer, it should, you know. WhatsApp web app. Yeah. What was that web either or okay? But if you've got any problems, just ping me your phone number and I can add you manually. Okay, um, let's switch the camera overhead. Okay, okay, so it's a little bit wonky, and that's my Lenovo laptop. For those who are wondering, let's get this out of the way a little bit. Okay, so you can see my workspace. It's it's not the worst. That's the <laughs> great thing about it as well. Thermomix can actually keep my workspace a lot cleaner 
than if I was, you know, for those of you who've watched me a long time, right? Um, you might remember those days when I used to live stream for like three hours on Twitch or everywhere else back in the whatever days, right? When you're cooking and you're doing everything manually, you end up leaving a little bit of a, you know, disaster zone on your kitchen bench, okay? But with a the Thermomix, because everything is self-contained, there you go. And you know what? Doing the prawn uh, paste this way, I would never go back to the old way I would do it. I actually still have a, a video on YouTube that shows people how to make prawn noodle soup, soup, right? Which is, again, using your traditional way, uh, using prawn shells, frying it up in lots of oil, adding water uh, and, and garlic and all that sort of stuff, and then adding water, and then you get end up with a big pot of prawn stock, which is fantastic, right? But this, I would wager, is more flavorsome. And the reason is that you've crushed the prawn shells until you've extracted every last bit of flavor out of it. And also the great thing is, you don't have to make a big batch of soup, right? Um, or if you do, you don't have to strain it and then store it in big like sure. tubs of uh, soup, stock or whatever. You can just store them into these and also it's a great way to use up leftover prawn shells as well. Okay, um, guys, like I said, um, make sure you join my WhatsApp group. The link has uh, been posted by Paul. And I'm going to be sharing these recipes and other cooking tips as I come across them. Uh, I'm still experimenting with its capabilities. I'm very confident of it. Um, I've been using the TM5 for, like I said, seven years, coming up to seven years now. I've never had any problems, but, you know, there were certain limitations about it um, that made me decide to go out and buy a TM6. So I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, those of you who know me, you would know that I'm not a hack, I'm not a hobby cook or whatever. I actually cook for a living, okay? So if the food doesn't turn out, people won't pay money to eat my food, okay? That's kind of like my philosophy, even though I don't, I don't necessarily make prawn noodle soup to sell. I, I do make other things to sell. Nowadays, now that I don't have my restaurant because I'm looking after my son, Noah. Um, but yeah, essentially, my bar is not trying to cook something that's just quick and easy, that's just uh, time saving, that's just whatever else. But my bar is to produce food efficiently uh, that people would actually pay money to eat. Okay. And finally, again, just as a reminder, if you're based in Sydney, Australia, and you are free on the 29th, next Thursday at 11 a.m., come over to my place over in Cogra. Okay. Cogra is just 20 minutes out of. The Sydney CBD so uh, pretty close to everywhere really and uh, we are going to run a little uh, Thermomix experience using the TM6 and also not just that because I do cook <laughs> and I like cooking I'm going to be preparing these and some other food that we're doing as part of this series for people uh, who join me who so that they can actually taste the food in person okay you're not just taking my word for it when I say this is very flavorsome and whatever you get to eat it at my place for free okay <laughs> right here thanks so much for joining me everyone uh, thanks Dixie and Sally and uh, Bernard and I look forward to seeing you guys uh, in my next session which is this Friday at again 1 p.m. Sydney hopefully I moved it a little bit earlier today because I've got another major meeting coming on coming up shortly that was uh, organized on short notice but uh, I look forward to seeing you at 1 p.m. Sydney time this Friday thanks guys bye